हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी जो हम लेवनसन लेंज पब्लिकेशन से कर रहे हैं टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस चैप्टर नंबर फाइव विच टॉक्स अबाउट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ मेडिकली इंपॉर्टेंट बैक्टीरिया नाउ दिस चैप्टर बेसिकली गिवस यू अ बेसिक आइडिया ऑफ हाउ द बैक्टीरिया आर क्लासीफाइड इन टू डिफरेंट क्लासेज लेट मी टेल यू एट द वेरी आउटसाइड दैट द वे दे हैव अप्रोच दिस क्लासिफिकेशन इज लुकिंग इन टू सम ऑफ द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड देर आर सो मेनी अदर वेज ऑफ क्लासीफाइंग बैक्टेरिया एंड विल डिस्कस सम ऑफ दोज एज द लेक्चर कंटिन्यू सो प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन द करंट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ बैक्टेरिया इज प्राइमरिली बेस्ड ऑन आइदर मॉर्फोलॉजिकल प्रोफाइल यानि वो मॉर्फोलॉजिकली बैक्टेरिया किस तरह से दिख रहे हैं डू दे हैव सेल वॉल डू दे नॉट हैव द सेल वॉल are they in uh, circles are they in spiral form are they you know comma shaped so morphological characteristics and other way of classifying uh, bacteria is biochemical characteristics and they are also very important so some of them for example are catalase positive catalase negative urea is positive urea so what is the biochemical profile some of them form the biofilm some of them don't form the biofilm those sort of thing so there are two uh, you know basic classification schemes that are used for classifying bacteria either it is morphological or biochemical a scheme that divides the medically important organisms by by genus is shown in this particular table and they are again and again highlighting this terminology medically important so the chapter ka naam yahi hai medically important so obviously the list that we are going to discuss is not a comprehensive or not a complete list but it mentions only the medically important organisms okay for pedagogic purpose this classification scheme deviates from those derived from strict taxonomic principles in the following two ways number 1 only organisms that are described in this book in the section of medically important bacteria are included in this discussion and number 2 because there are so many gram negative rods they are divided into three categories either respiratory organisms zoonotic organisms or enteric and related organisms so basically ye bata ye rahe ki ye jo table abhi hum discuss karenge and the rest of the chapter that we are going to discuss is not a complete classification system बिकॉज अगर आप टेक्जोनॉमिक क्लासिफिकेशन की बात करें सो इट इंक्लूड्स सो मेनी बैक्टीरिया एंड सो मेनी डिफरेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ बैक्टीरिया एंड सो मेनी डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ क्लासीफाइंग बैक्टीरिया दे विल देन बी टू मच फॉर देम टू डिस्कस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर एंड देर फॉर दे आर यूजिंग दिस वर्ड मेडिकली इंपॉर्टेंट ऑर्गेनिजम्स ओके सो मेडिकली इंपॉर्टेंट बैक्टीरिया सो दिस टेबल ऑन हेयर इज फोकसिंग ओनली सिलेक्टेड माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म अभी इस टेबल पर बाद में आते हैं पहले एक इंपॉर्टेंट टेक्सट लाइन पढ़ लेते हैं सो दिस इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड देन द टेबल बिकम्स मोर ईजी टू अंडरस्टैंड द इनिशियल क्राइटेरियन यूज इन द क्लासिफिकेशन इज द नेचर ऑफ द सेल वॉल यू नो द बैक्टेरिया आर सराउंडेड बाई अ सेल वॉल एंड इफ द सेल वॉल इज रिजिड इज इट फ्लैक्सिबल और इज इट एल टूगेदर एबसेंट सो दीज आर थ्री कैटेगरीज दैट वी डिवाइड द ऑर्गेनिजम इन टू दीज थ्री क्लासेज फर्स्ट रिजिड सेल वॉल फ्लैक्सिबल सेल वॉल एंड एबसेंट सेल वॉल ओके सो नाउ इफ यू लुक एट द टेबल हेयर सो वी हैव ऑर्गेनिजम्स नंबर वन विद थिक सेल वॉल्स सो दैट्स द फर्स्ट कैटेगरी द सेकेंड कैटेगरी इज दोज ऑर्गेनिजम्स विद Uh, flexible or thin cell walls and then there is a category which is known as wall-less creatures wall-less bacteria so that's the three different classes of bacteria they are identified in this particular table those with uh, rigid cell walls thick those with thin flexible cell walls and those who don't have cell walls now bacteria with the uh, rigid cell walls which have thick cell walls can further be subdivided into free living bacteria which are capable of growing on laboratory medium in the absence of human or animal cells which basically means that they do not require to enter into the cell to survive they can survive without uh, any other cell to be used as a host so these are called free living category then there are non free living bacteria which are obligate intracellular parasites which means they need a cell so that they can enter into the cell and then they can divide in there okay the free living organisms are further subdivided according to the shape and staining reaction to a variety of gram positive and gram negative cocci so if they are stained with the, you know they uh, do take up the color the gram positives and if they don't gram negative if they are circle round in shape cocci if they are rod shaped they are rods and uh, with different oxygen requirements some of them can form the spores some of them cannot so agar ab 
up is table code now if you look at the table first category which is rigid cell wall so what we are doing is the first thing we are dividing the bacteria into three uh, important categories number one with thick walls number two with thin walls and then number three without walls so wall less bacteria and then the thick wall are further divided into free living uh, and non free living bacteria so thick wall are free living which are extracellular bacteria they don't require a cell to enter and multiply they can multiply without even any cells they are then further divided into gram positive category so free living can further be divided into gram positive for example and gram positive can further be divided into if they are cocci or if they are rod shaped or if they are uh, spore forming and non spore forming so the classification continues so gram positive uh, can be cocci, streptococci, staphylococci, and these are the diseases that they can cause. See all of them very common, very important pneumonia, pharyngitis, cellulitis, abscess. And spore forming organisms can be uh, the ones which utilize oxygen and the ones which don't. And the examples for aerobic spore forming bacillus and clostridium is the example for anaerobic organisms. Okay, and then we also have a category called non spore forming rods. The non-spore forming rods can further be divided into those which make filaments like a structure and then those who are present in groups without making filaments and the examples uh, given there. So these are all gram positives. So once you are done with the gram positives, now we talk about gram negatives. They can also be cocci, they can also be rods and uh, they can be uh, facultative straight respiratory organisms. These are all the ones which causes respiratory pathology. These are all the ones which have something to do with some animals so zoonotic organisms you see here Rhesinia, pasturella um, francisella brucella all these either you are getting them from a, so some part of their life cycle is in the animals and you get the disease from there and then another category is enteric related so they are all associated somehow with your gut infections if they are curved you need to remember the example comma shape basically we call them vibro cholera for example helicobacter campylobacter they can also be aerobic they can be anaerobic so these are gram negatives okay they can also be acid fast so acid fast are those organisms which are particularly like mycobacterium the organism for tuberculosis they don't take up the routine gram stain they are not stained by gram staining uh, and uh, they are stained in a different uh, way and their diagnosis is altogether a different ball game it's not simply a gram stain okay we'll talk about it when we do this particular organism in detail and then there are non free living obligate intracellular parasites so what you notice that there is quite a lot of overlap between the classification system so if I talk about gram uh, positive organisms so gram positive organisms for example can have cocci and cocci can also exist in gram negative category uh, i mean the way to approach this would be that these are gram negative not being stained uh, you know whether they are not holding the typical gram stain and uh, if they are round they are gram negative cocci if they do get stained and then they are gram positive and if they are round gram positive cocci so that's the way to approach this okay and um, then the gram negative organisms which are particularly uh, affecting the respiratory system the zoonotic system and the enteric system okay and then there are uh, so all these up till now that we have discussed they are all uh, thick walled rigid thick walled organisms so they have a thick uh, cell wall and therefore they are either uh, classified as being stained with a gram uh, stain published thing the gram positive or not being taking uh, the the gram stain or the gram negative and then the gram positive can have so many different categories and gram negative can have so many different categories so this table becomes important for you to remember that way okay the second category of bacteria is flexible or thin walled uh, bacteria which are also in general known as spirochetes and their examples include treponema and borrelia and then there's a category which simply does not have a cell wall such as mycoplasma causing pneumonia so I mean you always have to remember and I told you in the very beginning of the chapter this is not the only way of classifying bacteria I mean this table for example does not tell you which one of them is urease positive for example which one of them is catalase positive for example so there are different classification schemes but what you have to remember is for practical purposes if you have to classify medically important bacteria which causes medically significant diseases this table lists all of them
and if you master this particular table then you are good for medically important bacteria okay so you should be knowing the what is for example nizeria so nizeria is a gram negative coccus so that's the way you have to approach so any single organism uh, if I take the name of, say, for example, Clostridium, you should know that Clostridium falls under the gram-positive category. It is an aerobic spore-forming rod. So uh, that's the way to remember and master. So you need to be able to track it backwards. Uh, if I give you the name of the organism, you should be able to tell me what classification system does it actually fit in okay and uh, so so that's quite a lot of work for you to do uh, because you have to remember all of them but that's the uh, very important and you've done with this then you are done with all the medically important bacteria okay now using these criteria along with various biochemical reactions many bacteria can readily be classified into separate genera and species so you, I, I hope you have the concept of for example myco mycobacterium so mycobacterium is the genus mycobacterium and then tuberculosis uh, is the species and uh, similarly you take any name mycoplasma pneumoniae so mycoplasma would be the genus and pneumoniae would be the species so uh, they, they are then usually classified into genera and species but let me tell you one more thing that now we have uh, this fancy thing coming up known as the dna sequencing and because of the dna sequencing many people are then reclassifying a lot of organisms so one example they have given is pseudomonas cepatia has been reclassified as burkholderia cepatia because the dna sequence was not compatible to pseudomonas uh, genera so they changed the genera completely okay and we got to know this based on the dna sequencing so there is a lot of reshuffling of names these days based on the results found from dna sequencing okay so some pearls are there for you the classification of bacteria is based on various criteria such as the nature of this cell wall, such as their staining characteristic, gram positive and negative, their ability to grow in the presence or absence of oxygen, aerobic and anaerobic, and their ability to form spores, spore forming and non spore forming. The criterion currently is uh, used is the base sequence of the genome DNA. Several bacteria have been reclassified using this information. So all good. Now the crux, and, and that's all about this chapter. And then we have uh, next chapter coming up. But for this chapter, the take home message for you is to master this particular table. So my suggestion to you would be sit down today, spend say for example, 15, 20 minutes with this particular table and try to recall. So uh, hide this bit completely and see if you can connect uh, these bacteria with the classification system so ask yourself what is bacillus is it gram positive or negative is it thick wall or thin wall or wall less what is coronary bacterium what is listeria is it gram positive or negative is it thin wall or thick wall is it filamentous or non filamentous so all the details if you are able to connect uh, this table with this table uh, I mean this column with this column then you have done good diseases can come on later so for example we need to also remember that corny bacterium causes what clinical uh, disease listeria causes what actinomyces causes what nocardia causes what so that's the clinical uh, domain but for now for microbiology uh, purpose you must know the organism and its classification system because that's the topic of this particular chapter okay so all the very best and remember what we have discussed start classifying bacteria into thick wall thin wall and wall less and from there on you go on to free living non free living spore forming aerobic and aerobic rods and cocci and whatnot okay so good luck and share the video with your colleagues subscribe to the channel my name is dr asif Qureshi, and you're watching dr asif lectures